Dear students, this is part 4 of our case study and we will see how to further shortlist the candidate proteins that we obtained after MS1 and MS2. You know that MS1 helps measure the intact mass of the protein and that a candidate list is formed after filtering the protein database for that specific mass. As a second step, we further shortlisted the candidate protein list by employing the MS2 and MS2 provided us with the peptide sequence tags. So we searched these peptide sequence tags in the protein sequence databases and those proteins that contain those peptide sequence tags, they were shortlisted further. Now, MS2 will give you several measurements, some of which will not be included in the peptide sequence tags. But still, that is very useful information. So as a first step, you shortlisted the proteins by their mass. As a second step, you shortlisted them by their peptide sequence tag. So can we utilize this information that is there in the form of MS2 peaks that have not been employed in the peptide sequence tag to further shortlist the candidate protein list. So this is where we'll look at in this part of the case study and we arrive at the theoretical spectrum of a protein. Here in this example, let's take a protein that we're working with. So to begin with, you can generate a theoretical mass spectrum for this protein. How it is done is very simple. You simply fragment the protein at every site and you obtain various peaks that are there in the spectrum. So let's say fragment number one, which resulted in this and this is reported here or fragment number two that resulted in these fragments is reported here and so on and so forth. So this is called the theoretical spectrum or the in silico spectrum. So once you have generated the in silico spectrum, then you want to look at the MS2 data. So in MS2, as you saw in the previous module, that we had C1, C2, C3, and Z8, Z9, and Z10 fragments. So in all, we had six fragments that were reported, six different types, and that we want to compare these fragments with the theoretical spectra. So once you compare each fragment with the theoretical spectrum, then you can actually know how many experimental peaks they match with the how with how many theoretical peaks. So you take that number and if that number is high, it means that the experimental protein sample is the same as the candidate protein. So using this strategy, you can have a theoretical uh, spectrum comparison with the experimental spectrum. Now, you have the MS1, the intact protein mass. Now you have the MS2 or the peptide sequence tag. And third, now you have the experimental and the theoretical spectrum match. Each one of them will help you to shorten your candidate protein list. And after going through the third step, which I just talked about now, you will have a very small candidate protein list. However, there is one thing that is still missing. And that is, how can you arrive at an integrated mechanism to compare which scores can be obtained from each part of MS1, MS2 and the in silico and experimental spectrum?